to order. Yeah. Okay. First, uh, appealing decisions from the Story Zoning Commission. Pursuant to the provisions of 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that a final hearing before this commission is appealable to the Chancery Court of Davidson County or the Circuit Court of Davidson County via a state statutory writ of certiorari. You are advised to seek your own independent legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filled in a time filed, I'm sorry, in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements are met. You should also seek independent legal advice regarding the applicability of the real certiorari to the specific decision of the Historic Zoning Commission. Um, has everyone reviewed the minutes from last month? If so, do I have a motion to approve? Move approval. We have a second? Second. All in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Uh, minutes approved. Okay, with consent agenda. Uh, items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public he hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. At this time, we have no items that will be removed from the consent agenda, so staff. Oops, have uh, nine items on the consent agenda. Um, 2612 Essex Place is demolition of a non-contributing building. 1902 Russell Street and 2001 18th Avenue South are new accessory structures with reduced setbacks. 16, 1516B Ferguson Avenue is a new addition. 14, or, sorry, 4302 Elkins Avenue is also an accessory structure with setback reduction. 1420 Calvin Avenue, partial demolition and new construction of an addition and an accessory structure. 1209 Shelby Avenue, uh, demolition of an accessory structure and constructing a new accessory structure with reduced setbacks. 1221 Forest Avenue, demol demolishing a non-contributing building, and 1511 Fatherland Street, also demolishing a non-contributing building. Staff has reviewed those applications, determined them to meet their applicable respective design guidelines, and recommends approval. Okay, any discussion about these? Any questions for Sean? Okay. And now, uh, that's it. Do I have a motion to approve the uh, consent agenda? Move to approve consent agenda is presented. Second. Point order. Did oh, we sure. Invited any? Did we invite anybody in the audience to comment? Have we already done that? I just I, maybe I wouldn't hit it. Mm, I didn't ask, but I guess um, I would imagine when I when I made the statement, I guess I was waiting there. But is there anyone in the audience that um, would like uh, to discuss any of the consent agendas and be taken off the consent agenda? Motion second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Consent agenda. Okay. Now on to new business. One four Fifth Avenue South. Thank you. This rooftop addition up without a permit and then came back, received a permit, but didn't make the alterations. Now the new owner has come in, removed the, the violation, and has started doing the work of the last permit that you issued for this project. Um, and now they'd like to make an alteration. On the left is what was initially approved, and on the right is the new version they're, they're recommending now. The overall design and materials have not changed, but the height has. The previous version was approved even though it doesn't meet the setback requirements for rooftop additions because the building is unusually shallow and has a low sloped roof, which is also somewhat unusual for the district. Also because the proposed addition was pushed back on the building just as far as it could go, and the height was minimal. Under the new proposal, the alterations to the addition are now approximately 11 feet tall from the parapet wall. This additional height runs across approximately 32 feet of the front facade, where initially only a small portion of the addition reached that peak height of 9 feet. In addition, little of the original roof form was evident in the previously approved plans, but now in order to screen the mechanicals, there'll be what appears as a side gable roof. 
Because the addition does not fully meet the setback requirements, the additional height is inappropriate and pushing beyond the limits of the definition of one story as required in the design guidelines. Because the additional height is needed as placement for mechanicals, denial will likely mean that they need to reconfigure the seating space. Staff recommends disapproval based on the fact that the one-story height, as required by the ordinance, should be minimal since the addition does not fully meet the setback requirements. And the applicant is here if you have any questions or if you have any questions for me. Okay. Any questions to staff? Robin, does the mechanical units, or do the mechanical units have to be concealed? No, screened. since it's since it's up since it's dining in that location, they wanted them screened for noise as well as for visual reasons. Historically and speaking, they do not. Or no, for, for it's totally up to the applicant because it is dining space. Initially, they had it. If you can see on the left image, they had it on the rooftop just to the far left. But structurally, the building won't take it. So now they want to put it on top of the addition that, or a version of the addition that was originally approved. So they're pushing the height up even further. So there are two units that are, they're trying to hide, or probably three, but two sections of them. Is that right? Well, the applicant can answer more oh. questions like that. I don't know the exact number. A question, Robin. Um, the setback of the addition, uh, or any, of the, I guess, the structural members of the addition, is, is it the same as the previous uh, approval? The, it is similar if you take into account just the um, roofed portion, the, the gazebo-ish part of the roof. But that was not as wide and not as tall as what's now being proposed. Okay. Any more questions to staff? Thanks, Robin. Thanks. Uh, would the applicant like to come forward? Uh, just come forward, state your name and address. I'm uh, Mark Bixler with Manuel Zeitlin Architects, uh, 1819 21st Avenue South. Um, as um, Robin had said, the primary thing driving this is the mechanical equipment. Um, the equipment that was originally designed and was approved by um, the Historic Commission was scheduled to sit to the north of the rooftop terrace, um, and the equipment one won't, the building uh, won't support the equipment there on the existing masonry wall. It's a two wide brick wall. This building was built in, um, s some say 1811. Um, it's the oldest building, I believe, downtown. Um, the structural engineer had concern about loading that wall additionally on top of what is already loaded there, just simply the, the structure itself, and then putting the piece of rooftop equipment on it. Um, the new construction that we're building, um, will obviously support that piece of equipment much better. Um, the view that Robin had put up, the sort of semi-fictitious elevation, um, which is actually n not visible from anywhere, um, there's a, in the packet that was submitted, there's actually a view from across the street, which you can see better how much of the rooftop is actually visible. The intent from, uh, yes, correct. Um, that's page 10. 106. Um, so the trellis structure was part of the initial design. The piece that um, sort of has the, the pattern on it beyond the parallel lines um, beyond is the section of roof. This is the view from uh, across the street at Bridgestone Arena on the sidewalk um, for our computer software. Um, the, the rooftop, uh, what the roof is made out of, um, the intent initially was is that it would be metal, um, just like the roof is on the building right now. Um, but that is subject to, if that's not something that Historic wants to see, then obviously it can be changed. The piece to the right, which is lifted up, um, the parapet that hides that piece of equipment, you can see from the view on 106, you can't even see that piece, the fact that that parapet's gone up 42 inches from where it was previously. The other thing that's a little bit um, deceiving about it is, is that immediately to the north of this building is Rippy's. Um, there's an alley between us and Rippy's that's about four feet wide. So if you were to approach this building from Broadway, 
uh, you don't even see anything on the roof until you've literally passed Rippies, at which point you you can, well, now there's nothing up there, but you could, you could, that's the point at which you would see anything that is on the roof of the building. And honestly, there simply isn't another place without putting in a superstructure within the building, a supplemental structure to support the mechanical equipment um, other than on the rooftop where we've proposed it. There are a couple other items. I don't know if you want all of these addressed at the same time, but in the application letter, um, I had sort of outlined the things that have changed in the process since the permit was issued. Um, that was back in July. Um, we had initially applied to replace all of the windows, and that's not going to be done. I, you're not particularly going to care about that. There are two windows on the alley side, um, which is the southern side of the building, which are getting bricked up. Um, previously, the intent was to cover their inside of the stairwell, which we have to build for egress. Um, the intent was to sheetrock over them on the interior with four layers of drywall. The problem is, is that the, the heads on the windows had cracked. Um, the brick in most of the locations in this building is all being repointed. The contractor um, would like to just brick those windows up instead of sheetrocking over the interior for the safety of the windows. Um, the storefront is slightly different than what had been proposed previously. Um, I think it still meets everything that um, Historic had approved previously, but the door looks slightly different than it did previously. Um, the, the platform to the north of the rooftop terrace that had previously been designed to hold all of the mechanical equipment is now just going to hold a fan that wasn't shown there previously. Um, and that's the exhaust fan off of the kitchen, which is directly below it. The screen you have on the for the two units instead of the, the one that is longer than the units themselves. I guess for an architectural feature. Yeah, it it, it could certainly be shorter. It, how much over the unit is it, or is it right at the same height of it, or how much shorter? I guess that maybe I should ask. The, how much shorter is the peak of the that it could go? I guess. Um, before you don't see the equipment, or before? I guess that you feel comfortable. First, that you'd be comfortable. That you'd be comfortable with, I guess, first sure. of all. Um, ideally, it would be uh, six inches taller than the piece of equipment, because as Robin had said, there's this sound attenuation as part of it, um, given that the rooftop will be occupied, and that's a package unit that's on the roof, so it's going to make noise. So the, the goal was to contain noise, um, as well as f from the actual terrace, you almost don't see that piece of equipment. Um, so the, the roof itself is more of a noise issue, um, although from the street you do see it. So um, you know, I, I believe I'm six in, at the peak. I'm six inches higher than the piece of equipment in this drawing. Okay. That's where I'd, I'd like I'd like to keep it as low as possible because every additional foot costs more money. But yeah. um, at That's the same time, I'd rather not um, be lower than the piece of equipment itself. That's understandable. Or these are all um, condensers. They're, they're, none of these are package units that are. Pack, yeah, the large one is a package unit. The other so one is, is a, the other one's a split system. Okay, and it's it feeds it feeds the second floor of the building. Okay. <clears throat> okay. No, it's okay. It's Any more questions to the applicant? Robin, the, there are two sets of screens, right? Your concern is the increased area of the screens plus the additional height from 9 feet to 11 feet? That's correct. The increased area, massing, and height. It's just an awful lot to be putting on what was originally a, a small residential building. The railings and the rear of the property that surround the units, 
how does that fit in the historic code? Um, tell me if I'm not really answering your question. The guidelines state that rooftop additions should be no more than one story. But since this doesn't even meet the setbacks, staff felt like that one story should be very minimal. And they worked with us and they came up with that nine foot maximum. But again, it was just nine feet at one, one point. This now is 11 feet and spanning almost the entire length of the building. And yet doesn't meet the setback requirements. Any more questions for the applicant? Okay. For now, uh, I think if I do, I, I'm, I may have. I guess I have a question for staff, uh, which which may also involve the applicant. This is, a, I guess, a conceptual sort of question with regard to the shape of the existing buildings and their form. The stair bump at the back of the parapeted building without the roof, gabled roof, more residential form on it, is, is that viewed as maybe more, any more or less appropriate as a location for, it seems that that building comes closer to meeting the intent of the setback, as it were, with that bump up in the back. Is that an accurate statement in terms of how staff would view this? If I understand what you're asking, yes. Okay. I guess where I'm going, <clears throat> where I'm going with that is that you, there's a lot of clearances and things that have to happen with mechanical units, but if it were more isolated towards that end of the building and more condensed to that location, might it be more pal palatable or approvable, I guess, as the guidelines go, conceptually? You know, again, I it would we felt like it was already really a push Agreed. to allow the nine feet yep. since the setbacks weren't met, and it, again, it's just a lot to put up there. To now push up the height any anywhere was a concern of staffs, so and why we didn't feel like we could just approve it on a staff level, like we did many of the other changes that that they needed. Good. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, sure. We might call you back, but no <laughs> thanks a lot. Anybody else would like to speak um, on or on behalf of this project? It's in the audience. Okay. All right. Close public hearing. Uh, discussion. I'm inclined to support staff <coughs> recommendation. However, I think there is a solution there. Um, I don't know if you want to. Um, withdraw your proposal for 30 days and try to come back and meet with staff and take some of our suggestions um, or not but I think there's I think it can be resolved I just I don't think what you've got here is I think you may have difficulty getting it approved personally yeah, for sure. Great. I've got a few questions for staff. Um, the, uh, the applicant mentioned uh, breaking up windows and slight change in the storefront. Um, are any of the other changes, um, does the staff have any concerns or issues, or is the, is the recommendation of disapproval based solely on the, the height of the uh, It is roof solely addition? on the rooftop addition. All the other changes have been approved. Okay. And then... Um, the trellis that's shown currently, that's, um, is that, that? That's the same as it was initially. Okay. All right. And then I think if you, if you look at the floor plan, well, two things. I think if you, if you, I think staff's done what they're supposed to do. I think, I think their analysis is correct and, you know, relative to our guidelines. Um, however, you know, to some degree, it's sort of like the, the question of what's what's visible from the street on you know dormers and additions and things like that. Uh, given the depth of this building is only um, 35 feet, I think, um, and we have a required setback of 30 feet. Um, 
you look at strictly at the elevation, it seems pretty um, um, inappropriate if you're looking at it just in two dimensions. You look at the floor plan and realize sort of the constraints that they're dealing with, and you look at the 3D model here, you realize that they've essentially pushed everything as far back as they possibly could to achieve a rooftop terrace. Now, could there be some tweaks in the design? Maybe. Uh, could the units be grouped together in one area where you know there's not as much of a, uh, whereas a portion of this could uh, be lower, perhaps. But you know, like I said, I think the staff has done what they, what we charge them to do. But I'm uh, inclined to approve this, or at least approve a you know a minor modification. Um, of this, just given the limitations that, that are set forth. In fact, you know, I think, you know, my, my, and this is my opinion, more related, more than related to the guidelines, but, uh, you know, architecturally, I think this is probably going to be more attractive than what we saw in the previous approved, what sort of looks like a metal uh, warehouse, you know, rooftop addition. Um, so those, those are my thoughts. If you were making a motion, what kind of modifications would be to try to centralize it and um, just to uh, lead, 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 lead you on a little bit? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess what um, was suggested earlier is building on the south side um, because there's no set uh, front facades closer to the sidewalk. The building's deeper. The mechanical units could be you know, closer together toward the south side. Uh, that part of the rooftop addition is probably less visible potentially uh, than, than the northern part of the rooftop addition. So uh, if, if it was possible to cluster those units together, create one structure up there to screen that. Sorry. Um, you know, that might be a, a solution. Um, Again, you look at the view from across the street, and, and as the applicant had stated, there's no real side views of this building because of the buildings on either side. And, you know, it's, it's pretty unobtrusive, and given the constraints that they have with only a 35-foot building, and our guideline is 30 feet, uh, and they need to get an exit stair and, and such in there, it seems to me like they've sort of achieved, um, you know, they've, they've done a pretty good job at trying to minimize the impact. Is there any discussion from other? And, and I agree with Hunter saying I, I just I just don't really want to sit here and try to design it for them. Right. I mean I I think again they're very close. I think we're open to something, and I just don't want to spend an hour trying to figure out how to design something that they may or may not approve. So I'm sure. Well, if um, if there was a motion made to approve this and it was turned down, they could come back in a month. Is that right? With some alter uh, alterations. Before we get too far, um, I think to maintain perspective, and, and not that lots of effort has come to cram in a pretty aggressive program into what amounts to two small little historic buildings um, that are, you know, next to a, their attractiveness from a real estate standpoint is they're across the street from a behemoth of a performing arts uh, or from a, from an arena. So I mean, I get it, um, and and have 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 obviously done um, quite a bit of work to to do this. I, I would, I think there are some opportunity, or there are potentially some opportunities. Um, with an understanding and a knowledge of um, how these things work, certainly not without difficulty, but I, I still feel like if, or, or, or I, I may be splitting hair, I am splitting hairs, but I, I think because of the form of the building to the right, I'm more inclined that, that the street view is what's obstructing the view of the left side you know gable that's parallel to the building's gable is, is a trellis that's an added element were that not there it's, it's no longer obstructed um, and my thoughts are that it, it is more appropriate to add 
additional height. I'd be more inclined to, to accept the argument of additional height for the necessary stair piece containing the unit in that, you know, perhaps there's a, a flip of the stairs so that, you know, you, you don't have this big exposed mechanical elbow coming out from the package unit if you can get that over there and, and chase it, you know, the, the chase is obviously over the other building. Um, there's some, some work perhaps that can be done to, um, to mitigate this further. The applicant may you know, may have looked at all options, but I think if if the um, if they could get the package unit, there is certainly more flexibility on the split system to locate that in a less obtrusive way. And you know, while while I understand loading that existing brick wall is problematic, I mean, you're loading the whole building with a rooftop addition. I, I, I'm I'm disinclined. <laughs> To buy that, I mean, based on that specific location, I get that the structural engineer is concerned about that. But when you're loading the whole roof of the building, I, surely there's a there's a place where a condensing unit could could go that that didn't require a, a, a screening fence. But I, I I don't I don't have all the answers. I just know that we've we've gone some distance, and then now we're we're being asked to go just that much further is. And I, I, I do agree with your comment that this proposal is, is pro architecturally is, is probably desirable to the previous. I think listen to especially um, Commissioner Fletcher and, and all, we probably should, uh, we've given them comments and we probably should um, make a decision based on what we see, but we've kind of given a good idea of what we probably are looking more to approve given some. So I don't know if the applicant would like to consider a delay or if you prefer we just go ahead and rule on it now if well my sense is if it's a delay then I'm coming back and if you rule on it then I'm potentially coming back with so more I think you pay twice but I don't know about that you, you, pay you, pay, you'll, you, you don't pay it's considering what they pay for a piece of property um, coming back isn't going to break the project <laughs> okay uh, is there I'm curious I guess what I, what I would look for if um, yeah, you can come back up. What I would look for is if, if the proposal is not uh, approvable, then specifics as to w why, you know, if, if you can quantify that um, and give me some directive on what you're looking to see. Um, and obviously, um, you know, the project was approved by you July, I, I left my paperwork there, 8th or something like that. So um, it's it's being built. So the notion of flipping stairs or moving chases or something like that isn't viable at this point. Um, moving the package unit uh, over off top of where the chase is can certainly be um, dealt with, but it's going to mean that the package unit has exposed ductwork on the roof. Um, yeah, so it's certainly, anything is doable, um, but just know that the notion of redesigning the project um, will will kill the project. It'll stop. It'll it's stop. Underway, so. Yeah, it's it's underway, um, and the and the the intent is to open as as soon as you guys say we're okay to finish. <laughs> okay, so the so um, the project is actually already constructed. These are changes that are. Or are we well underway to be constructed? Apparently, the the interior work started, I believe, before July, right? The okay, interior work, interior demo, demolition. yeah. And then once they received the the permit from you in July, they started work on on the rest of it. And so, the, like you said, the stair is there, and I believe some construction for this plan that's before you has been started. Um, but again, staff's thought was that they could be located on the rooftop itself. It did not need to be on the rooftop of the addition. And of course that would mean smaller bars, smaller seating areas, something like that, but the, that might be a possibility. Okay. Um, okay. I, I think we're still charged the same way we are. Either we have to um, approve it on what we see here and on the merits of it, and we have um, I think we still have kind of given where we've given staff um, and applicant where we're headed toward what we would approve and instead of us put, doing the full design now unless there's more discussion amongst the group about that and what we would be more um, 
prom to approve, I guess. And maybe we've done it before if we need to have one of the commissioners be part of to help you guys. If, you know, we could probably do that too. So it seems like there's a lot of interest in it. But any more discussion? And then if not, can I get a motion? I'm just, after what Robin just said, um, if, if this was approved back in July and they began construction, um, I'm curious as to how we find ourselves here at such a late date with such inability to change with the construction so, so far underway. Um, I think he said that they had changed owners. Is that what happened? Did I miss that part of it, or no, same owner? It's the original plan was to, if looking at this image, if you look at the far left, um, the original plan was to create a little platform there, and all the mechanicals would be on the other side of that wall that you see on the left. Mm -hmm. But structurally, once they got into it, they realized structurally that wasn't a possibility, and so they've devised this new plan that's before you today. Okay. Well, did they come back? Uh, th that's my question. Did they come back to staff? Yes. As soon as they found that out? Yes, and, and, been, and staff didn't feel like they could approve it, didn't really feel like it met the guidelines and the intent of the last approval, and so that's why it's before you today. Okay. Thank you. I, I do have uh, one other question, and then I'm happy to put a motion out there. Um, is the floor plan of the rooftop terrace any different than what was previously approved? The floor, the floor plan is slightly different because that platform on the left that was going to house or hold mechanicals is no longer there. But the location of the trellis roof, the the bars, the seating, that all is the same. The railing, that's all the same. And then does um, the staff review um, location of mechanical units and screening of mechanical units? We do. Height of mechanical units? Yes. All of that. Um, Okay, so those were going to actually be on the existing roof in the previous proposal. Correct. As opposed to the upper roof. Okay. Um, I feel a motion coming. Well, this is, this is somewhat preemptive. Okay. <laughs> I will move that we approve the proposal as uh, the applicant's okay. proposal um, as proposed. As submitted. Yeah, absolutely. Do I have a second? Okay. Um, I don't feel comfortable with that. I do think that, I mean, I would support it if we went to the route of having someone from the staff, I mean, if one of us work with staff and work with the architect to modify that plan so that it's a little bit more in line with what staff We do wishes. have, okay, so we do have a motion, but we don't have a second, right? right. Okay. So motion. You don't want to make an amendment? <laughs> you don't want to add to it? No, I'll let you make it. <laughs> All right, so that motion, okay. that motion dies. Can um, I still ask one question? Yes, sure. <clears throat> Before the motion dies, or are you ready to? I'm, I'm happy for the motion to pend. Okay. Just ask a question. Okay. Um, if that's all right. Robin, the this sure. technically, technically, if there's a motion on the floor and it doesn't get a second, it dies for lack of a second. You could go ahead and second the motion so that you can discuss the motion and whether you want to amend it or change it or whatnot. But in order to get to discussion, you've got to, somebody's got to second the motion. Otherwise, the motion's going to die. Okay. So the motion, so the motion is, so the motion is died. Okay, the motion is died. Okay, go ahead with your question, Commissioner. My question is, if I understand it correctly, the uh, the units were supposed to be on this far left wall. The structural issue was found while they were under construction, so that's a surprise. And now we have this additional height because of that. Is there any, I mean, were there any changes to mitigate some of the visibility sort of in exchange for the additional height? It, it, 
to me it just seems that if you if you've got a surprise maybe there should be a little concession here or there if there were other things that we stretched on before if we need to stretch more here in height maybe we ought to take back a little bit on something else and that seems like a fair middle ground for something that seems to have been unexpected considering we were stretching it sounds like in the first place is our, I, my question is to frame it again it, do you see any opportunities for something like that that we could suggest? It seems to me that making any changes to the floor plan would lessen their bar or seating space, okay. which is the same result as putting the mechanicals on the rooftop as opposed to the additions rooftop. Okay. I think we might end up in the same place. Or even a worse place, maybe. Okay. okay. Well, I think I mean, one of the things along the lines of that, if you look at a106 is, is submitted by the applicant. The original, unless I'm misreading, the original location for the mechanical would not necessarily be visible from the street. And so we've taken something that wasn't visible before that was screened from the noise. But because it was unable to be located there, it now then jumps to the roof, which makes it visible and necessitates additional height. Yeah. Two. Two feet of additional. Okay, so do I have a motion? Motion brewing? I'll brew one. Okay. Um, I'll move approval subject to um, a member of the board, which I may nominate Hunter Gee if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Because he seems so intimately wanting this thing to happen. Uh, and staff to work with the applicant to come up with a better means of screening and less visible. Um, but knowing that the board is supportive of some portion of the extra roof being two feet above what was previously approved, but it just needs to be a lot less than what's shown in the current plan. Okay. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? I was just going to amend the. Do you accept your, your appointment? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my question is is that giving staff enough direction <laughs> to proceed? With helping the I mean, do we need to quantify it in a way that, say, we need to figure out a way to reduce it one foot or one and a half feet? Hmm. I, I, I agree. We may need more direction on what. what yeah. is well, I mean, if it's clear to staff the direction we want to go, I just want to make sure that we've given them the, that. No. <laughs> it's not quite clear as mine. Well, let's ask Hunter if he's got a direction. <laughs> well, I, no, I would, I would prefer to amend the motion to remove my name from the motion. <laughs> Okay, we, we got your name. I'll, I'll remove Mr. Gee from the motion. <laughs> Thank you. We'll volunteer him later. Do we have to vote on that amendment? Well, do we? Can someone restate the motion? Or, or Mr. Fletcher, if you could restate the motion so that everybody is clear, because we want to make sure it's reflected accurately in the minutes and that if there are any questions or if there's any appeal, we want to make sure it's clear in the record so everybody knows what they're voting on. <laughs> okay. If you would. And that's, this way you could take out Hunter, too. Right, exactly. <laughs> Um, move approval based on staff recommendations, except that the board will approve a screening of three or two additional rooftop units on the roof of the roof. That needs to be, but the screening needs to be lessened based on the comments that we've had during the meeting. Now, it's a little better. And then the, uh, did I mention that someone from the board should be working with the staff? Okay. My problem at this point, I really don't know how to quantify. You know, uh, 
if it should be 60% of the screening or a foot less. I, I don't know how to do that, but I'm open for suggestions. Second, and we'll discuss that. Yeah, why don't we do right. that? Let's get the second again, and then we'll discuss before we vote. All right, I'll second that motion. Okay, discussion. Okay, uh, I would ask that we possibly amend the motion to read that it would be a conditional approval rather than approval based on staff recommendation, mm -hmm. so that it does say state in the very beginning. Yeah. Agree. So, so amended. Okay. So a conditional approval, working with staff and a board member to lessen the height of the screen to a more um, approvable amount. Okay, so we have a second. We have a second. I have some comment. And we're still discussion. Clarity. Yeah. Sure. Um, with respect to the guidelines and steering this towards something that most closely resembles um, what what the setbacks are and what the guidelines are, and, and again, taking into account the building's form, I would encourage the appropriate solution here would focus the any in increased height or, or mechanical units that were screened to be pushed towards the um, parapeted roof, and that form-wise that be the taller piece because it more meets the street, it's further set back from the street and based on the applicant's um, depiction of the sidewalk view from across the street, which is on the right of way, but then, you know, of course, we're, if you back up to the door as the entrance, we're, you know, you're, you're a little bit different perspective, not, not a lot different, but a little bit different perspective that it'd be focused primarily on that building. Granted, some of the site conditions might cause it to extend a little bit over, um, and some leeway would be given to the applicant there, but certainly um, needs to be less than 25% of the width um, as some clarity to what would be, I think, more closely resembling what we're trying to do with setbacks and rooftop additions, period. If, if I may jump in on one other little issue, one thing that uh, staff thought might be a possibility if you were headed towards the route of approving is that the wall on the left was created in order to screen the patrons from the mechanicals, but the mechanicals are no longer located on the left. So would you also be open to saying that that wall should go away and it should just be posts like it is on the right of the trellis area? I like that idea. I, I would agree with that. And make that recommendation as part of the direction to the applicant to um, get this. So, Robin, can you show us in the elevation which wall you're talking about? Because that is it that wall. Or? I could even take it on that 3D one actually, but this is fine. Well, if you're looking at this one on the um, left elevation, you see the trellis. Mm -hmm. And then that wall that goes back from the front of the building is a solid wall. But on the right side of the trellis part of the structure, it's just posts. And that was proposed that way at that time because the mechanicals were going to be on the other side of it. I think that I think that's a, a good recommendation. Uh, would minimize the impact of what's visible from from the street. Um, I don't know how specific we can get. I was kind of headed the other direction of being more general, but basically to work with staff and a member of the um, commission to minimize the impact of the the new location of the mechanical units uh, on the roof. So in other words, if they can move it closer to the, all the units closer to the south, if they can move them back toward, you know, further back to the back of the building, if they can, you know, 
minimize the amount of roof or the amount of sort of screen wall that's uh, that's 11 feet high. All of those things that we've talked about are possibilities. We just don't know what's achievable. I'm not sure if uh, the 25 percent then would be achievable necessarily. So if you look yeah. at the plan, you can see where the you can see where the chase goes down. Well, Set the units go come outside, go straight down. Right. You don't want to make metal. Sticking out the side of an addition, so it would include that, I'm guessing. And yeah. In plan, that doesn't look like a whole lot of space. But, you know, what if we just. Take something can't do. You want those things to end up being four inches wide and six feet long, so the practical practicality has a little something to do with it. What if we then just uh, we keep it with Richard's e email, um, email Richard's uh, motion to minimize it? Because um, he, he, he didn't give a specific. And we go do as he said, we're minimizing it working with staff and a board member helping staff and will a board member to be decided later. Can you read the motion? So, along those lines, our, our charge is not to be arbitrary and I think if you talk about things about the form of the building and, and the fact that you know, the view angle of the, of the roof is heading up, that to me that's, that's a that's a reason to the reason to be is 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 that you do have that parapet there, and from this view it appears to be mitigated. And if you can form wise attach those two things to each other, that would be my argument for doing it on that side as opposed to just saying, "Oh, no, whatever you work out is whatever you work out," and you know that'll work. Yeah. The motion I have right now is Commissioner Fletcher moved to approve with the condition that a member of the board work with staff and the applicant to come up with a better means of screening and for the additional height to be less visible. Some portion can be as much as two feet taller, but not as much as what is currently shown. And um, Vice Chairperson Nielsen seconded and made the uh, and asked that the that it be revised to read as conditional. So we actually talked about the height there in the original one. I think it's just important that, I mean, I think Ben's raised some very good points, and I think we all know what they are, and that just be referenced when this thing tries to get resolved. And just one, one last question, too. Sorry, um, I assume if, if the applicant and the staff uh, and the chosen commissioner can't come to agreement on, um, then it would come back to the, to the commission. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay, I guess I'm, I'm, I've gotten myself in a circle now. So do we need to uh, vote on this one that we have out here now, or do we need to retract to, to make it more, um, or can we have all the comments that we have since they're part of the discussion as part of, so is that good? Because we, we've given a bunch of information. Okay, so we can vote on it as is, and all the discussion that we've had can be used. Okay. Okay. Was it was it amended to make it conditional? Was that a yeah? That was yeah. okay. So have you all voted on the amendment and then vote on the motion as amended? That's what that's that. what needs to happen next because okay. I think she put a minute a, okay. an amendment so, on the floor. I'll second the amendment. Okay. All and um, and we're amending to make it conditional. That's what the right. conditional right. approval. Right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Motion carries to amend the original uh, motion. Now, uh, the other motions out there, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. So motion carries as conditional approval based on everything we said. Do we need a second to the, the we, amended motion? We did. Ben did that. Oh, okay. Ben did that. Okay. okay. Nothing is easy. This I'll, we shall start off 2013. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. 1508 Paris Avenue. Okay. We'll see if it's even an issue. Uh, this is an application for new construction at 1508 Paris Avenue. 1508 Paris is currently a vacant lot. There had been a modular or mobile home there uh, that was recently moved out of the district. Thanks. The applicant proposes to construct a new single family structure and a detached accessory dwelling unit. The form of the new primary building is similar to that of a craftsman style, which is a common 
historic house type in the area. It has a side gabled roof and a gabled front dormer. The house will be one and a half stories tall. The width and the height of the house are similar to several historic houses nearby, uh, including some two-story houses across the street. And um, this is a, actually a house form very similar to the one that's being proposed a few houses up on the same block. The proposed front setback of the new house will match the front setbacks of adjacent houses, and the side setbacks are consistent with those established by the rhythm of existing houses on the street. With the accompanying accessory structure, the total square footprint um, leaves roughly two-thirds of the lot remaining as open space, which is compatible with the open space of surrounding houses. Uh, the average is actually about 70%, so it's greater, but not so much that it's significant contrast. And staff finds that the massing and location of the proposed structures meet the applicable guidelines. The exterior materials of the new house will be smooth face cement fiber siding with a 5-inch exposure, cement fiber trim, asphalt roof shingles, split face concrete block, which are all typical of new construction and meet the guidelines. The porch rack, porch floor, and eave brackets would be wood. Uh, additional information is needed on uh, some of the materials and details, uh, like windows and doors, the material of the porch columns. Uh, the upper section is not known. The bottom is brick, but we'll need a brick sample. Um, with the condition that those materials are approved by staff, the materials would meet guideline 2B1D and staff finds the window pattern and roof form are also compatible with out of historic houses. Uh, this is just the right side elevation, the left side is similar. I've attached in your floor plans, but I don't have in the presentation. The detached accessory dwelling will be a one-story garage with living space in the upper half story created by dormers. The building will have a footprint of 550 square feet and will meet the design standards for detached accessory dwelling units, which are uh, pretty precise or specific, I should say, in their requirements for footprint, eave height, ridge height, etc. Uh, as I said, it meets those standards with the exception of one. Because it has living space, zoning, uh, not the design guidelines, but zoning requires a minimum of 10 feet separation between primary and accessory buildings. Um, because there is sufficient, face, su sufficient space behind the proposed building to move it back and still meet the uh, setback requirements without requiring a reduction, uh, staff finds that there's room to, to make that happen. And the material of the accessory building will match those of the house, uh, cement fiber siding, asphalt shingles, etc. The roof form and the general character of the building reflect that of the house as well and meets accessory uh, structure design guidelines. And there's a comparison. So, uh, in summary, staff recommends approval of the proposed new building, new primary building, and accessory building with the condition that the accessory building is moved back so that it is, le it is at least 10 feet from the primary building and still meets the setbacks, and that the color of the roof, material of the windows, doors, porch columns, and other materials are approved by staff. With those conditions met, staff finds the proposed new construction to meet the sec applicable sections of the Belmont Hillsboro Conservation Zoning Overlay Design Guidelines. Any questions for staff? Staff, um, <clears throat> the plan shows, I don't know, four or five steps. The grade necessitates about nine, which means the porch is going to be, I chuckled a little bit, one and a half story. <laughs> it's going to be two with that big base for the front porch out there. So, and, and the, I noticed in the photographs of the house down the street, there were about six steps to get up to the porch. Um, Granted, there again, I acknowledge there's some grade here, but we've run into this before where, where suddenly the foundation is, is constructed and this house sits two to three feet taller than the, than the neighboring houses and, you know, it has to do with the shape. Of course, the, the you know, the grade of the lot 
if the house next door can find a way to, to not be so elevated off, it, it, we, we, we tend to get this stair step that, as we've seen in the past, can be undesirable. Um, I, I just want to bring that up as, as something for consideration. And, and I know it's nice and, and clean and neat for the grading contractor to do it that way, but it may not produce the most desirable result from the street. I didn't, I didn't know how much just from the site photographs and adjacent houses. If we have adjacent houses, I know in the past we've required applicants to at least come close and not be um, varying greatly. I think we use that word occasionally in our guidelines, not to vary greatly from from other uh, other houses on the street. Uh, we can um, certainly follow up with the contractor on that. On, on this one, on 1402, you can see uh, the new construction sort of in the center of the picture and a historic house to the left, although it's had a inappropriate addition that was done prior to the overlay expanding. And you can see, although they would have had similar grade, the historic house had a retaining wall. Mm -hmm. Maybe that that's a solution we can look to reduce the actual elevation or f of the floor level would actually probably stay the same, but the perceived height would be different by coming up at the front rather than right at the house. E either way, I, I, I mean, I understand why. <laughs> I've, I understand and I've heard all the reasons why it can't happen. <laughs> I'm just not buying it. I, you know, it, it, whether they want to retain in the retain in the front and, and fill and or push earth around to, to make it happen, it, it costs money and that's why they don't want to do it. So um, typically that's why, if it's speculative, it, it's not typically yeah, you know, they don't want to do it, um, but then it does a, make a difference uh, yeah. from the from the street elevation. I, I can I can say for sure. Noted. And are the, the Yes, uh, you're right. 1402 is a few houses down, and then this is the actual site. Um, it's hard to tell. Uh, the one on the left has a sort of a, an e exaggerated brick foundation. Brick goes all the way up essentially to the window height on the house that's there on the right. So it's hard to tell where the where a normal foundation height would be. I think some mitigation would be from from the. The plan probably is okay, but it only shows the elevations in the plan. Job there. The plan probably would be acceptable or comparable. The elevations with nine steps to get up there, um, not so much. Is the 32 feet from grade from the front or from the back? Uh, I believe we took that actually just sort of on the side elevation from the grade straight down to the. Uh, to the point, which is essentially at the midpoint of the house. It's not necessarily how we would normally do it, but because there is a significant drop, it sort of felt like that that was an average. Um, and maybe go, it's another foot and a half or so towards the very front of the porch. Just have a question, Hunter. Uh, yes, uh, unrelated, sorry, to the comment, but I think Ben's comment's uh, a good one. Um, on one of the drawings submitted, it shows the rear setback um, right at the, at the face of the garage. Um, this is the one where the plan is sort of shaded. you know what the zoning calls for on the rear setback? Uh, it would be a minimum of 10 feet is a standard setback. Um, uh, the, I see on the site plan they're showing 15, so they have five feet of play that they could push back. And it looks like it only requires another two and a half feet or so, three feet. Yeah, uh, they were all, uh, fine with that condition okay. as well. Actually, they're fine with both conditions. Okay, okay any more discussion? All right, thanks, staff. I guess there's nobody... Um, in the audience, <laughs> so uh, close public hearing. Do I have a motion? Move approval with staff recommendations and the additional condition that the um, staff review the adjacent home or, or require that the applicant minimize. Yeah, that they minimize the foundation and that the applicant present, you know, 
evidence of adjacent homes to um, to in their resubmission or, or recalculation of the required number of stairs shown in the elevation to more closely match the rhythm of uh, porch elevation from the adjacent grade on um, adjoining properties, uh, well, adjoining and, and properties the next, you know, two, two to three houses down. Okay. Some reasonable average thereof is acceptable. I'll second. Okay. Discussion? I'd just like to offer a quick amendment. You use the word minimize. I'd suggest we uh, use the term reduce. Um, minimize might get all the way to the ground, which is not where we want it either. So amended. Or uh, do we need to? I guess we need to vote on that. It's fine. Go get it. All right. This long. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Did I get a second on that amendment? Second. Okay. All right. Um, all in favor of the amendment to change, um, amendment to reduce, right? Minimize, 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 minimize to reduce. Minimize to reduce. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Amendment um, to the motion carries. Um, okay. Now, um, all in favor of the motion on the floor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Do we have any other business? One more thing I'd like to tell you about is the old house fair. This is something that we in Tennessee Preservation Trust are putting on. It's going to be March 9th. It'll be a full day, 9 to 3. And it's going to have exhibitors and hands-on demonstrations and sessions that help owners of old properties learn how to rehab. Information about windows, information about foundations. When is a foundation too far gone? When does it just need a repair? Um, paint colors, wallpaper, full full range of, of activities. And as some of you know, we did this last year. We're expecting a much bigger um, event this year and a much better turnout. And I'm excited to say we've also got some activities for children. One of them is going to be Vintage Millworks is going to work with the kids on building small um, uh, birdhouses for the backyard. So, And there's going to be other crafts for kids as well. So just wanted to let you know about that and hope you can all be there. And if you have any recommendations or can help in promoting, we've We've got flyers, ads, press release. Happy to get it out for you. And it is free. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Motion to adjourn? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. See you next month.